All right, guys. Uh, so thank you for joining. This is uh, another session. Uh, welcome to another uh, VR80 session. Uh, today is the May 5th, and the time here is 4 past 4 p.m. PST. So today what we will do is um, we will, um, you know, do some touch up on the general ledger and sub ledger concept. OK, I know you worked on some assignments. Uh, you created some vendor groups, account, sorry, vendor accounts, posted some transactions, and then tried to do the clearing. But fundamentally, why do we have a sub ledger? Why do we have a main ledger? Right? What's the difference between this and why there's a big deal? Why? What do we do if you don't have any of those? Okay, so that's all we will cover. Okay. Good. All right. So first of all, if you look at the financial statements, so what's your financial? St what is what? What is a the main form of reporting, right? When I say we talk about reporting, what do, they, what do you do with reporting? So reporting is basically a financial statements, right? You have to have a financial statements for reporting. Make sense? So when I say financial statements, what are the two important financial statements in accounting? Profit and loss and balance sheet. Okay. Profit and loss statement and balance sheet. Very good. So these are the two important financial statements in any accounting right accounting concepts now you know what are the things goes into profit and loss statement you know what are the things go into balance sheet items so the t the t the sorry the two key things that goes into balance sheet account is ar right which is receivables receivables and number two is ap ap <laughs> right so what's the AP, what's the AR? So AR, when it's a receivables, a company sells to a customer, right? And as you know, it's all credit sales. What happens when it's a credit sales? That means the, the customer has to pay you in the future, right? Right. If the customer has to pay you in the future, it becomes a receivables in a balance right. sheet because any time he will pay as per the payment terms or, right, as per the payment terms, Right, or you can you know request him to pay early and you know give some discounts and things like this. So it is your receivable. It's an asset. The money is with him, right? Anytime you'll get the money, so it's receivable. It's a it's yes. a it's a liquid assets, in other words, right? Similarly, mm -hmm. on the custom and the vendor side, you buy something from a vendor, from a supplier, and you don't pay cash right away, even though you possess the goods, right? You bought the goods from him, but you don't pay him right away, right? Mm -hmm. Right. But you'll pay in the future. That's called payables, payables. right? In mm -hmm. the future, anything that's that's called payables. Now that makes a big difference between P and L and balance sheet. So P and L, anything that's incurred that goes into profit and loss statement, right? Your sales, your purchases, your you know, cash discounts, your insurance. It's already incurred. Those are expenses that are as incurred, right? It goes into P and L. Anything that sits and generate future value, that's your balance sheet. Right? There's a fundamental differences. Right? Receivables means what? It's the future, right? Payables what? It's the future. Loans, borrowed what? You got to pay in the future, right? Assets, it's a, it generates value in the future, right? Also depreciates in the future, right? Right. Mm -hmm. your, your, your stock equity, your capital, they're going to sit there, but what's happening, right? It is put into operations and it's making, it's churning, it's making revenues. It is, right? That's a, as incurs. So that goes into PL. <clears throat> right? Very, very simple. So how do you identify a balance sheet and PL? You have to think about it. Whether there's something that generates value in the future, negatively or positively, right? Increasing or decreasing. Yeah. That's a balance sheet. Very simple. Correct? You buy gold. Right? What's happening? It's increasing the value. It doesn't do you don't do anything with them, right? It's increasing value in the future, right? You buy a fig, you buy a machinery. It's not an expense because it is generating value. At the same time, positively is generating value because you're putting into production. Negatively is generating value because it's depreciating. Correct? Correct. That's a that's the difference between it's not a it's it is not somebody who it is not it probably not a perfect definition as per the books. I don't care, but this is what I understand. I teach. It is also easy to understand, right? So this is how you understand what is a PL and what is a balance sheet account. Now when it's a receivables, <clears throat> okay? So when it's a receivables, you got 1,000 customers, for example, right? Mm -hmm. Customer, you deal with you deal with them, right? 
-hmm. And then any point of time in a company will have some receivables, right? Because there's always receivable because it's a cycle. Sales is a cycle, right? Mm -hmm. the, right? That's why they call it order to cash. From the order to cash, it takes a long time, right? So every time there's always receivables in a company because the sales is a cycle, it keeps happening. The customer keeps buying, right? Mm -hmm. So you always have some receivables. Agree? Yeah. Yes. Correct. So that's always a company with receivables. That goes into your balance sheet account. Correct? Now, somebody wants to see, okay, boss, I see that you're telling me you have $200,000 receivables. Okay, great. That goes into your balance sheet, right? Yeah. But somebody wants to know what this $200,000, where this come from, right? Yeah. Maybe come from 500 customers, 200 customers, mm -hmm. or 50 customers in a, in a large corporations, right? The big capital intensive companies, there could be 50 customers, right? Mm -hmm. They have to pay you. Now, that happens in sub ledger. All the transactions, individual transaction to individual accounts, okay? You have to remember this word individual transactions to the individual accounts could be vendor accounts could be customer accounts could be fixed assets all these individual accounts that you wanted to manage individually that happens in subledger okay the reason is you don't want to put 200 customers into your balance sheet make sense Right? Balance sheet is a balance sheet. They call it balance. You only want to see the, you want to show the balances, not the details, right? Yeah, right. So subledger is basically uh, which manages all the individual transactions as you could see here. While I don't... Okay? So this is a, this is a sample subsidiary ledger, as you all see. ABC Accounts Limited, Accounts Receivable, Subledgery for Year Ending, da, 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 31st December 2019. There's opening balance for account who? Mr. Williams Incorporated, right? And this is the comp this is the name and this is the account number. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. This accounts receivable. In SAP, we have account number for him and this is the name. Okay? And this is the individual account and the individual transactions gets captured under this account. What's his opening balance? What's his sales total? What's the, how much we received cash from him? And what is the balance? What is the balance for William? $250,000. $250,000. And because it's a receivable, it's a debit balance. Okay? Because it's a receivable, it's a debit balance. Okay? And did you guys watch the video where I said accounting concept, the only accounting concept that you need to understand? Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. So, vendor is what? Always credit. 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 Great. So, you got that, right? So, vendor is always credit. So, the accounts payable will be credit. Make sense? Because it's yes. a vendor. Accounts mm -hmm. receivable is debit. But and accounts receivable will be credit. Yes, sir. But sometimes, uh, you know, the vendor... Vendor can be debit as well because we, uh, we, we have, there are credit memos, right? Yeah, the credit memo is only given when, when there's an invoice, what is your invoice, right? Right. So it's actually, received. you have a payable before, you have a receivable before, right? I am yes. saying generally in exceptional situation, yes, sometimes you uh, owe money to the you know, customer. Right. Right. If maybe he overpaid, right? Mm -hmm. Or you under delivered, right? Okay. <clears throat> then there'll be dispute. Then you basically give him a debit memo. Then he will adjust that in the future purchases. Yeah. Right? Sometimes we we return return the you know the item to the vendor. Yes. Then he will get a credit memo and so on. Yes. Sometimes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. So, however, vendor balance is credit. Vendor credit. It's a credit balance. That's a sub. That's called subsidiary ledger. Now. Now here you see two accounts, right? Mr. M. Williams Incorporated, number 20503. Mm -hmm. T. George Incorporated, number 20792. Okay? So this is mm -hmm. happening in the subsidiary ledger. Right? Okay. But I want this to represent the balance sheet. Make sense? Mm -hmm. I want this to represent the balance sheet. So we have a subledger 
customer and vendor account when mm-hmm. you when you say original document this is a sales document this is a purchase document make sense yes when originally okay. when you make a sales to the customer what do you do credit what customer customer no so you didn't watch the video you didn't you didn't record the video you didn't take notes hmm? this is a customer account right you are making a sales what's the transaction we will uh, debit the customer debit the customer and credit the sales why you watch the video we are selling we are selling you know no you from the video right to customer no no you watch the video right accounting concept that you only accounting concept that you should know yes 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 why yes. i said why i say it has to be credited sales has to be credited because uh, we will we are supposed to receive no, no, payment no no, no. no no i'm talking from the video don't jump ahead boss if okay. you don't if you don't listen to the video forget it okay that's a base i'm i understand but you have to know the base right the revenue generated from the sales is mm-hmm. credited no what list tell me from the video can anybody but video uh, i didn't get that video this is okay no it was shared so I, it was shared in the group as well okay i i cannot really um send somebody to you <laughs> and hand deliver this to you unfortunately <laughs> in the shopping mall yeah unless you order on amazon because it's account receivable i believe that's why it's not okay why you okay debit expenses why debit expenses why we debit expenses yeah. because uh, uh we pay uh, overheads basically no, that's no, why no 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 okay you guys have to watch the video okay no i mean it it's watch but it's a whole time when i watched basically that's you okay no you watch it again okay Okay, I'll do it again. Am I can I speak about debit? No, no, no. See, I'm speaking on behalf of everybody. Okay, I'm just want to okay. make sure everybody watches the video and everybody understands. Okay, I know some people have a, a super smart. Some people are just limping in the you know in the back in the background. Okay, that's why this video will <laughs> this video will help you, right? Anyways, right. Okay. Okay. Debit the, debit the expenses, credit the revenue. Debit. What's the spelling of debit? D E B I T. Correct. D E B I T. Yeah. D E B I T. D E B I T. Debit. D E stands for debit expenses. Okay. Okay. D E stands for okay. debit expenses. This is how you remember. I, I, you know, I, I can. Nobody can teach. I. This is not a CPA class. Okay. This is mm-hmm. uh, to basic accounting. In order to learn SAP FICO, right? You have to know this. How do you remember this? So I simplified uh, some of the accounting concepts. The way it's easy to remember. Right. debit expenses you just forgot about anything else you know right and opposite of debit expenses is credit revenue right cr so is it CR. all the time is going to happen yes credit revenue okay so is it okay i'm i have a question sorry that's why I, see I'm, if I'm you just... if you reverse an expense obviously it's a credit okay don't ask it's, me it's about it's about the sales uh, transaction you're talking right is it yes but it doesn't matter so what what do you do with the customer you sell right yeah, yeah. when you sell you debit or credit the sales your sales portion you debit or credit hmm we debit expense and credit <coughs> revenue exactly you credit the revenue yeah credit revenue or income cr cr stands for credit revenue that's all you need to know okay yeah yeah right we, we, we decrease our equity no no i don't we... i don't want to know debit expenses credit revenue is it easier yeah yes, yes. you keep your story with yourself okay number 2 um you only know this um similarly vendor credit you know right yeah. vendor credit vendor credit the opposite is debit the customer right yeah when they always yeah. debit the customer which means customers receivables all the receivables all the assets you debit when it goes up okay fix the assets anything that's all you derive it okay it is okay. very easy okay. to you only need to know debit expenses the rest all derived make sense yes, yes. <clears throat> you only need to know debit expenses vendor credit these two things you need to know the rest all derived mm mm-hmm. 
correct you had to write it down in a piece of paper you you know you could do all the derivation okay so this this session is not for that <coughs> now mm -hmm. um this is a in subledger the transactions happens the sales happens here okay right then yeah. it registered entry in the customer account right because if you know there's a different department who manages all the customer receivables, right? The sales department, order fulfillment team, the credit department, the dispute management. So they have a different team, right? Mm -hmm. So they oh, yeah. make an they the the entries will be get captured in the customer account because this is individual customer account, right? They have thousand customers, two thousand customers. Every mm -hmm. customer's transaction will get into the sub ledger. Make sense? Yeah. Now in yes. your balance sheet, you don't want to you don't want to represent, you don't want to show all your ten thousand customers, right? Mm -hmm. Think think about this example. Very easy is bank accounts. When you go and look at the bank state, not your bank statement, banks bank statement. <laughs> Sorry, banks financial statements. Okay. Yeah. The bank will have what? All the deposits, right? Yeah. Make sense? All the yes. customers' money deposits and then all the loans given to the uh, or, or the loans it's received from the Fed or from uh, some other bank, right? Yeah. Now, when you have all the deposit, which is the which is the when payables to the bank, right? Because the deposit, anytime yeah. you will take the money from the bank, so you will need the money. It's a payables yeah. to them, right? Yeah. When they lend money to people like car loans or mortgage, that's the receivables from them, right? Mm -hmm. So when you look at the financial statements for a bank, you don't want to know whether X, Y, Z, Tom and Harry, and you know Steve, Walter. Jose all borrowed money or not. You don't care, right? Mm -hmm. You want to know how much is the total receivables and payables. Make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. That one entry, that one entry goes into summarized in the general ledger account. Make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. So in the financial statements, you have a general ledger account, which is also called a control account. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Right? It's the same account, right? Uh, which is called control account, which gets all the transactions captured from individual accounts. Individual transaction happening in accounts. Make sense? Clear? Mm -hmm. Not clear? Okay. Yes, clear. Okay, so this is very important. Now, how they are linked? Any questions? Somebody has questions? Uh, yeah, but, but, yeah, one question. Yes. So you said that, uh, just like uh, I mean, you ex well explained, uh, we debit the customer and credit the expense, right? That's what you said. So. Yeah. When we credit, uh, sorry, credit the revenue, right? Right. right. Credit the revenue. So revenue will the, that revenue be credited in the sub ledger uh, self account, and, or it is go, gonna question. go directly to the yeah. Very good question. It's not because credit it is not a sub ledger account. Revenue is not a sub ledger account. Revenue is a general ledger account. <clears throat> yeah. Very good point. When is a sub ledger customer accounts, vendor accounts, fixed asset accounts? And contract accounts, right? Material accounts. These are sub ledger because there's a separate, separate models to manage them. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your sales, it's a general ledger account. Okay. That goes yeah. into your total, goes into your because sales Profit is a sales. Loss. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sales is a sales, right? It is not whether you sell to, um, you know, Trump or Biden is the same thing. It's a sales. Mm -hmm. Right. You, do, you don't have to manage them in the separate sub ledger. What you have to manage them is in the APA. Same. How much I pay, how much I owe, how much I somebody owes to me, right? Yeah. <clears throat> in payables receivables. That's called subledger. Okay. That's a good so then no, the, no, but but sorry. I have a point. Uh, sales is a general ledger, but what did we sell? Is is okay? It can be in uh, de, uh, defined in sub ledger as well because we we sold a car, we sold a bike, <coughs> we sold a carpet, we sold X Y Z. The sale the sale is a general ledger, but what we sold uh, mm -hmm. if we if we try to that's a good point. I'll answer the question. I, I got to yeah. I got to the question. So this situation when you say sales, right? When you sell something, great. <clears throat> yeah. Let's say you are in the process of, you are the company selling cars, right? Yeah. I mean, everybody sells some kind of goods and services, some 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 physical goods, right? So when you sell physical goods, what happens? You do credit sales, right? Mm -hmm. But then what's happening is, you know, in all the ample interviews, these guys, all sorts of accounting questions they'll ask. I got actually two interviews last week. They were all sorts of accounting questions. Tax, this thing, cost of goods sold, a lot of accounting questions. Mm -hmm. um, 
when you sell to a customer okay first of all um you um you credit the sales but no no when you when you there are two things okay, well <clears throat> let's not get into a detail to his question yes because you are also issuing material you are also sh issuing fixed assets so you're selling it that happens in a separate fixed asset ledger make sense right you have a separate fixed asset ledger where it gets tracked where it gets you know counted physically verified all the stuff that happens in fixed asset ledger now you're also issuing materials you're producing goods and you know you're selling materials inventory that happens in inventory ledger correct right mm -hmm. But your stock account, ending stock account, will go into your general ledger. Yes. That is the control account. Okay. So that is why when you can define a control account, okay, reconciliation account is also called control account. Mm -hmm. Okay. In US, generally they call it control account. So it's good to know control account. They call it control account because um, in US, as per um, in, in accounting terms, it's called control account or reconciliation account. People learned mm -hmm. accounting from SAP, they call it reconciliation account. But generally, mm -hmm. accountant, they call it control accounts. <clears throat> mm -hmm. okay. So here, this is where you define, the tie, this is a bank account, which is just a balance sheet account. It has not a sub mm -hmm. account, right? Mm -hmm. Right? Because you don't manage your separate bank statement, because bank statement will come and update this. Right? You're not doing anything in your local, mm -hmm. local system, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not a sub at all. But whereas customers, vendors, assets, this is where you link a general ledger account as a customer account or a customer's account or vendor accounts. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Then you assign this GL account for it. Let's just take an example. Is it right, BK? Yes. Yes. That's the question I asked yesterday, I believe, with, to, with Bhavana. Uh, so she didn't understand. Is that what you're saying? Uh, uh, she tried her best, and I tried my best to understand uh, about reconciliation. <clears throat> okay. All right. So if you look at the GL account, right, sundry creditors, okay? Yeah. Sundry creditors, which is a payable account, right? Sundry creditors payable account. It's a liability, right? Account group liability. It's a balance sheet account. If you go to the control data, it is selected as a vendor account. Makes sense, right? <clears throat> yes. Now, every time, um, how the vendors link, how the vendor, any time you post your sub ledger, uh, vendor postings, how this GL account will get updated, right? So basically, you assign this GL account in the master data of the vendor. Okay. Right. So one when one, well, one GL account can be assigned to multiple vendors. Right. More than one vendor. So every time all these vendors get transacted, whether decrease or increase, right? They get recorded in this GL account, 10980, which is a balance sheet account. Right. Right. Now, what you can do, let's take an example. Um, I can create a, let's say, let's go and create a FK01 vendor master data. FK01 um let's create a account group account group so yeah number range is not a center account group good <laughs> okay so it's internal i'm going to create a um, customers are vendor here, right? Title. Mm -hmm. mm, what can we do? <laughs> L Brands. L Brands is the owner of the company. And they were trying to sell to Psychmore, another uh, trust fund for $525 million. So the deals fell off. Now the sad thing is, who is going to buy secret, secret Victor's secret? It's it's, <clears throat> you know, they have to wait and see. It's very expensive. <clears throat> and then, and then the V Work space, right? You know, there's another company called V Work. <clears throat> the V Work 
you know you know the company we work company it's a billion no. dollar yeah, it's a billion dollar company we we work is basically all the the shared office spaces mm-hmm. oh, okay that's fine so this the i'm when, when i'm creating this vendor i am assigning this reconciliation account this is a jail account okay don't get mistaken this is just a jail account okay okay i okay. am assigning this to this so i can assign this 10980 to many vendor accounts correct bk uh, yes bk right all right save this now this vendor 9190025 was created in the company code similarly i can create many vendors and assign the jm gl account correct yeah correct now okay. that is how these two things are linked right i can mm-hmm. so the, the, the this 1090 this gl account for example yeah first and then <clears throat> the gl account balance i will see here okay 2020 cricket match 100 no data so basically you are saying that whatever whenever we will uh, post an invoice for uh, any vendor and we are or, or, or let's, let's let's say this way we'll make a transaction or or make a payment to the vendor so uh, w- w- whatever transactions are going on on that th- that will record in this re- reconciliation account on the back side or like mm, on the back side <laughs> like on the, on the background yeah. okay yeah. yes on the background yes it gets the one transaction uh, will be entered in sub ledger it will get recorded yeah. also in the main ledger and the reconciliation account ledger. yes okay Sorry. right yeah. So this one hundred nine eight zero. If you look at the balance, this Sunday creditors, you how much? Mm-hmm. What is the total balance we have in this account? What's uh, the total balance? Eighty one million. Eighty one million. Yes, <laughs> that's the total receivables. But however, this total eighty one millions represents thousands of vendors. Could be right. Mm, okay. yes. So how do we know this? We do know this. So the only way we could know this is you could take this one hundred nine. Nine eight zero and run a uh-huh. FBL one Three. n one n one n line oh, n FBL one n okay make sense FBL one n report report which for is the, the vendor which is report for the vendor so how do we do this FBL one n let's do ah three 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 company code yeah you're saying something no yes. Big. that's the gl account number and through fbl1 and you can just use the vendor account okay from there okay. but do you know the vendor account number it's not hmm? do you know the vendor number vendor account number no then so what i'm trying to do here is <clears throat> i select the recon account okay so basically here I'm running a report for all the vendors which has the reconciliation account, one hundred nine eight zero. Make sense? Mm-hmm. Okay. Which has all, which has one reconciliation account. This account assigned to all the vendor master data. Okay. Let's do this. And what's the number I'm expecting in the bottom? Eighty one million. Exactly. Good job. So these are the individual. Vendors assigned to the GL account, like four zero one Chicago Bulls, four zero one Vendor Master, right? Dunkin' Donuts. Mm-hmm. So there are one hundred and eighty four line items. Okay, totally one hundred and eighty four items. Okay. Okay. The uh, I'm sorry, uh, just uh, to correct myself, these are the payables, right? These are the payables. Yes. Uh huh. See, this is one vendor. Right. This is one vendor, right? This is comprises of lots of vendors. Now yeah. I'm looking at the total of eighty-one million dollars. It should be. Yeah. It's actually ninety-nine million dollars, right? Why? <laughs> Why? Is there something wrong, right? Good point. Mm-hmm. So it causes a reconciliation issues. Okay. Uh-huh. Yes. That is why there is a reconciliation. Between, there is a reconciliation task between sub ledger and main ledger. Okay. That's what a lot of accountants do in the company. Make sense? Versus, Can you repeat one more time, Jay? There is a reconciliation issue here. For example, 
in my account 10980 okay gl account uh-huh. main account gl account i have 81 million dollars as a outstanding mm-hmm. as of 2019 right yes 2020 there's no data correct yes there's no data so as of yeah. 2019 i have 19 81 million dollars 539000 whatever it is right yeah yeah so this is this come from multiple vendors yes and who in the master record of which you have this gl account correct yes Reco- as a reconciliation account right so yeah. what i did i went to fbl 3n which is the line item display yes okay i was all requesting vendors. it yeah all the vendors but whatever vendor has a reconciliation account as this 10980 okay mm-hmm. see yeah. if i run this okay. without this dynamic selection you would get all the vendors but i don't want this right i want only vendors which is assigned to this reconciliation account make sense yeah yes i'm doing all the open item as of today okay right because 2020 anyway there's no data i can also run this yeah. for 2019 make sense yeah yeah right i'm going to do this now so oh, there's some problem why did not uh, that uh, data carry forward it in 2020 is there any process to carry forward um, well i will i'll get there i'll get there okay. so 100 See, what's it? See, look at the difference. Last year it was only one eighty-four. Last time when I ran the report, mm-hmm. right? Now it's in one zero three. Yeah. Right. So let's see what's the balance here. That was thirty thirty-four million dollars, right? So yeah. that's definitely a reconciliation issue, right? And then reconciliation thing, issue. See, this is also display currency in euro. This is also in euro. So, in as a matter of fact, when your books are correct, this number should match this number. Correct. Correct. Yes. Yes. So that's why I'm saying there's a reconciliation issue. Okay. Okay. So why the sub ledger postings did not completely enter into general ledger, or that's what it is, right? The sub ledger postings were not completely recorded in the general ledger. If you see these transactions here, right? They have they are thirty four million dollars, but whereas in my general ledger I have eighty one million dollars. There's something wrong, right? Yeah. We apply the fiscal year uh, like filter like 2020. No, so this is the fiscal year 2019, right? Yeah. So can you apply the fiscal year 2019 no, is, filter no, there? No, I chose the posting date as of 2019. That's right. open. Open as of right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you're right. So if there are some data from actually, 2018, we should do this. we should we should run this as of now right because we are running okay. this report right now so, yeah so that's why we got 184 line items mm-hmm. so we still is wrong so but 19. if there is no what? Sorry, if if there is no transaction being done in 2020 fiscal year so what is the discrepancy like right right i'll answer you so what's your question bk So my question is like uh, we just saw the for 2019 fiscal year, right? Mm-hmm. So if there is some data which is 2018, and in this report we can see that as well, right? Because we have not specified the fiscal year. But if you year. do this, all items. No, will... I mean, what okay. I'm saying is just select the open item okay. and run the report. This is what I did, right? 184 line items, huh? uh i mean just change that take that key date you can just put the key date to, as of today this is today right yeah so yeah i'm sorry <laughs> and run that and apply the filter and fiscal year like from the lay, change layout okay go to fiscal year that's a good mm-hmm. point Just not twenty twenty, right? Yeah, twenty nineteen. Yeah. 
Wow, see? Wow, very nice. <laughs> and you are saying that yesterday she told you something you didn't understand. That was uh, no, 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 no. I said I tried to understand. <laughs> see? Yeah. So what, what, so what exactly is this? Like, can you just, uh, so basically, it also took 2018, right? Correct. When I did the open items, um, yeah. when I did the open item, it only, but whereas this report, right, it was not carried forward from last year. <clears throat> uh -huh. Okay. So 2018 also has the data, but it was not carried forward. For example, 2018, right? Mm -hmm. If you add this together, that's what I'm getting. If you reduce, if you minus off $17 million, yes, right, then you reduce $17 million, you will get the value. Um, so yeah, if you add around 99 something. Correct. That's what we got when I ran the report. Oh. If you carry forward, then it will match the report. So how do you carry forward? This was... This is what I was saying. Yes. Carry forward. Yes. So let's see. Mm -hmm. So basically, it was just a split of the carry split forward in the two fiscal year 2019. F.16, this is the transaction code I used. F.16. F.16. <clears throat> yes, I'm going to carry forward. Balance carry forward. It's not, it's not active. Yeah. So let's not do this guy here. Let's just try to run. Yeah, so like, you know, this is a lot of uh, the data is not, uh, the, the test system is not really great. So, carry forward doesn't work as we expected. Okay, so this is balance carry forward. So, when we perform this, right, this will carry forward the 2018 data, this balance into 2019. If it's 17509 credit, right, 17509. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if you run this for 2019, Right, if you, um, so how much do we have here? 81539, 81539, we have this, right? If you carry forward, yeah. the number will change, okay? And then yes. if it will change for both 2018 and 2019. So what, because we just filtered this year only for 2018, so 2019. If you remove this filter, right, we take both the years, so mm -hmm. we will get 90, 99 something, right? 90, 99. Yes. 99. Yes, so which is yeah. equivalent of this thing, 81 plus 17 million dollars. Yes. Okay, great. Good job, mm -hmm. Paula. So that's called um, sub-ledger, main ledger concept. So far clear? Yeah. So yes. just to recap, anything that happens individually in individual account is called sub-ledger. And mm. then the one transaction will get posted into uh, that same transaction will post into sub ledger. So if you want to look at this, this is the vendor line item display for all of these vendors that we saw. For example, like it, let's take it this case, this, this case P A P T or Boss. This is one vendor. We have twenty nine million dollars outstanding, right? Now mm -hmm. this is an individual transaction, but all of the transactions are posted to the same chain account one hundred nine eight zero. Okay. Right. So what you can do, you can go back here, change the layout here, click on the Rubik's Cube, and then bring the GL account. You will see all this are posted to one is the 1980 account. Make sense? Mm -hmm. so yeah. Pretty much yeah. all the vendors are posted to the same GL account. Make sense? So this is the link between the vendor and the GL account. Okay. Clear? Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. Um, so, why don't you go ahead and continue the other? Um, now you. So here's the thing. Uh, I wanted to um, obviously share this recording, okay? And I want you to really um, go back and really work on your accounting skills, right? Um, what have you right. learned so far? Write it down. You know, think about more scenarios, possible scenarios, and things like this. Mm. Okay. 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 All right. So the question he asked was, uh, when you post a transaction, okay? Yeah. So let's say we are we have been posting transaction using FB01, right? 
When you use FB01, FB01 is generally used for general ledger accounts, not for sub-ledger. Okay. Okay? Yeah. Sub-ledger yeah. posting should come from purchasing, from sales and so on. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, this GL account, uh, where is the GL account? Okay, this GL account, right? When you, the moment you set this as a vendor account, you will not yeah. be able to post directly into this account. Okay. Okay. You will not be able to post directly into this account. You want to try? Yes, you can try. System will throw an error saying that you, are yeah, you cannot post directly to this account. Okay, yeah. Exactly. It throws an error here. Yeah. So if you post to the GL account, let's say you select a posting key, whatever posting key, um, right? Um, the, the, doesn't, no posting key allows this because, so let's, let's just post to our traditional 4050, right? Account in company code 333 cannot be directly posted to. Why it says? Because this is set it as a reconciliation account vendor account. Which means you can only yeah. post to the vendor. Make sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. How do you post a vendor? Here, you select a account type as V. Right? For example, let's say invoice. invoice. Then the yes. posting key changes to 31, right? 31 is for vendor invoice. You're yes. crediting this. If I use the same GL account, system will throw an error because vendor, now system is identifying as a vendor. See, vendor. Mm -hmm. Because the, when you use the posting key, the moment you use posting key 31, system is looking for a vendor account here, not a GL account here, right? Okay, yes. Right. Now this account becomes a vendor account. See, if I select the drop down box, mm -hmm. see, all this become vendor. It's asking, it is providing me vendor information. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's a difference. So I can select a vendor and post to this. I cannot post direct to the GL account. When I post to 70025, in sub-ledger, an entry will go into this, this vendor, right? And then the main ledger, an entry will go to the 100980 GL account, reconciliation account, the balance sheet account. Make sense? Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. So basically, order? that so basically the this uh, uh, reconciliation account for that uh, the master or GL is is for display only, like for the vendors. Sorry, what's your question? I I meant to say that the, the it's for the vendor transaction display only. That uh, the reconciliation account one zero 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 two five. If you understood mm, my yeah, question. Yeah, uh, well, you could, yeah, well, I don't know if that's the right term. I never used that term, but you could say it's for display, yeah. Because display you're right. Only. Because, okay, I think where you, you're deriving the fact that because you cannot post into this account, you're saying display, right? Yes, yes, exactly. Okay, you cannot directly post to this account. It's only for display purposes in the reporting. Yeah, makes sense. That's fine. Mm, okay. yeah. Got it. 